crummy position at the end of that. So let's get stock specific. Let's talk San Fire. First half numbers. Let's get straight into the discussion there. What do you like about them? If we have a look at Sandfire, the next six months is going to be an important time for this company as it adjusts from being an explorer to being a producer and more cash flows coming in through the door. So actually if we have a look at the first half result, we saw a loss of $19.5 uh, $19 million, but that should change over the next year as it moves to producing. We are expecting to see first direct shipping all coming through from the company in that June quarter. So the next three months is going to be very exciting. And of course its key project is a degree project in WA and this is a copper gold project where they are looking to ramp up to more than 70,000 tons uh, per annum of copper at, at a C1 cash cost of about $1 to $1.10 by FY13. So it is an extremely exciting time for the company. Unfortunately, the first half results don't really uh, reflect what's going to happen over the next six months. And we did see a loss of $19.5 million. But the earnings isn't the key driver of this stock at the moment. It's a leverage to copper prices. And what we are seeing in terms of copper prices are prices still hovering around those four-month highs. So that should be a positive for Sandfire today. Of course, it's got a pretty enviable share register as well. We know that uh, Oz Minerals has a 19.9% .9 stake in this business, and POSCO has a 15.8% stake in this business, with the founders holding around about 8%. There's been plenty of speculation about Sandfire being a potential takeover target. But uh, Sandfire Resources, copper prices hovering near, near those four month highs, it should do well despite the loss that it announced today. Sort of a, a nice moment to then segue, if we can, Julia, into a discussion on IAG. Uh, if only because today there's been uh, a, a development briefing, as it were, today, as part of which is included uh, the announcement of 600 jobs to go. What, what's been the takeout for you? Uh, what, what are the markets looking for at this point in time from management? I think Insurance Australia Group has just come out to say that 600 mm. jobs will go and I think that has to do with the implementation of the merger with CGU. So it does look like as part of that there will be uh, some jobs which probably will be replicated so we will see some job losses there. In terms of National Australia Bank, if we do see that European arm being sold off, that's going to be a hugely positive catalyst uh, for the company. It's been a key drag on its share price. And if we do see capital returning to the company and the potential for a capital return to shareholders, it's going to be good news for NAB shareholders. It, um, altogether, though, if we have a look at that finance sector, it should do pretty well today. Of course, a key announcement from Greece is going to come at 5 p.m. today. Already the deadline for that Greece restructuring deal has closed 7 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time or uh, 9 p.m. Uh, the Central European Time. But the announcement is going to come from the Greek government at 5 p.m. today. And the key to look out for here is whether we see more than 90 percent of private uh, debt holders agreeing to this restructure deal because that means that the collective action clause agreement will not have to be um, will not have to be triggered and that of course means that Greek avoids uh, being uh, classified as a default for uh, CDS purposes or for insurance purposes. So the market's going to be keeping a big eye on that announcement coming through at 5pm and that should set the tone for next week as well as non-farm payrolls out in the US tonight.